Chicago is known for three things, Al Capone, deep dish pizza, and architecture. More than a few renowned architects have worked in Chicago. In the late 19th century, the style of these architects would be referred to as the Chicago School. These guys built the first skyscraper and several handsome buildings still around today. And then they died. So, where would such important Chicago figures be buried? Well, if you make your way through the traffic and crowds, take the red line to the Sheridan stop in the north side, you will find a Victorian era cemetery on North Clark Street, catty corner from a Burger King, called Graceland Cemetery, the Cemetery of Architects. Graceland isn't just for architects, though. Many of Chicago's historical movers and shakers were laid to rest in these serene funerary grounds. It was established in 1860 as a private cemetery by Thomas Bryan, who had a successful law firm in Chicago. Horace Cleveland was hired to design the landscape in the Victorian style that was popular at the time. Later, Ashen Simmons was brought in to enhance Cleveland's plans and Graceland's park-like atmosphere. Victorian-style cemeteries had landscapes with curving roads, rolling hills, and even small lakes or ponds. Their paths and gravestones were well-maintained and more elaborate than their predecessors. Some of the most common gravestones from this period were urns covered in a shroud, a classical symbol of Roman cremation. Grieving women leaning on a cross or other objects. Obelisks were very popular and are scattered all over Graceland. These tall graves were Egyptian symbols of eternal life. Cemeteries that predate this style were usually confined to small churchyards with poorly maintained gravestones. Sanitation was a frequent concern for these graveyards. Before Graceland, there was the Chicago City Cemetery. It was located in what is now known as Lincoln Park. Due to its proximity to Lake Michigan, it was risking contamination of the city's water supply. Complaints were filed and plans were made. Then, a cow kicked over a lantern and the conflagration known as the Great Chicago Fire destroyed much of the surrounding area. The city moved the graves to newer cemeteries like Graceland, though many of the bodies were left and built over. The only visible tomb that remains is the couch tomb, located next to the Chicago History Museum. It is estimated that up to 10,000 bodies still lie under Lincoln Park, watching unsuspected joggers and sports enthusiasts. So once the new Victorian style took off, people began to care how they would be remembered. Well-renowned architects were hired to design the monuments for the recently deceased. The following are just a few of the well-known monuments, mausoleums, and notable residents that can be found in Graceland. The Getty Tomb was erected in 1890 for the wife of Henry Harrison Getty, a famous lumber merchant. Architect Louis Sullivan designed the tomb that would eventually be designated as a city landmark in 1971. Louis Sullivan designed another tomb in Graceland for Getty's former partner, Martin Ryerson, who had died three years earlier. The Ryerson tomb is a combination of two Egyptian-style buildings, the Pyramid and the Mastaba. These ancient Egyptian-inspired monuments were very popular during the Victorian era due to recent archaeological discoveries. Another Egyptian-style tomb is the Schoenhofen Pyramid Mausoleum. It's unique in that it has both Christian and Egyptian symbols, an angel and a sphinx. It was designed by Richard E. Schmidt as a family mausoleum for the Schoenhofen family, who owned the Schoenhofen Brewing Company. The Potter Palmer tomb is the largest and grandest in Graceland. The tomb sits atop a hill overlooking a pond. It was designed by the architectural firm McKim, Mead, and White in the style of a Greek temple. Potter and his wife are both entombed in the granite sarcophagi. Potter built the Palmer House Hotel, had owned a dry goods store on Lake Street, and was responsible for much of the development of State Street. 
Daniel Chester French and Henry Bacon designed Marshall Fields Monument, known as Memory, in 1906. Fields turned Palmer's Dry Goods Store into Marshall Fields & Company. It became one of the most popular department stores around the world. The Field Museum was named after him for his generous donation to help establish the museum. One of the most unique monuments in Graceland would be the grave of William Holbert, which is in the shape of a baseball. Holbert was one of the founders of the National League, baseball's first major league, and was president of the Chicago White Stockings, which would later become the Chicago Cubs. Graceland is called the Cemetery of Architects for two reasons. It has several well-known monuments and mausoleums designed by famous architects, and there is a good chunk of respected architects buried there as well. Architects like Louis Sullivan, who designed two tombs in Graceland, and also a few buildings in Chicago, two of which are the Auditorium Building and the Carson Perry Scott Store. Another is William LeBaron Jenny, who designed the first skyscraper in 1884. You might recognize a few of Bruce Graham's buildings, the Sears Tower and John Hancock Center. Daniel Burnham has his own island in the pond next to the Palmer tomb. He was responsible for the White City, the World's Fair held in Chicago in 1893. Of course, there is always more to a cemetery than its residents and monuments. Hauntings are prevalent in graveyards, and Graceland is no exception. Don't let those pretty monuments fool you. After spending some time there, you begin to notice its creepier side. There are two supposed hauntings in this cemetery, Inez Clark and Eternal Silence. There are no cemetery records of Inez Clark and no one knows who she was. People claim to have seen a young girl dressed in old-fashioned clothes walking in the cemetery. Also, the cries of a young girl can be heard near her grave. While running from the ghost of Inez Clark, you may stumble upon the monument of Dexter Graves, known as Eternal Silence. It is often referred to as the Statue of Death, for it is believed that if you stare into its eyes, you will witness your own demise. The eyes of the statue are the only part that have remained black over the last century, instead of turning green like the rest of the body. It's important to remember that death is coming for us all, depending on how much money you have or how well you were loved by those you left behind. You could have a nice monument for joggers, tour groups, and others to admire while they go about their business. If you want, you could be buried alongside these other historical graves someday. Graceland still has plots available. Graceland proves to be a perfect representation of the city whose dead it lays to rest. These graves tell the story of Graceland, the story of Chicago.